Comic-Con going? Good. Good. It's a lot. Did you do live stage already? Yeah. We did. Yeah. That's a thing. That's a trip. Yeah, it's a thing for sure. <clears throat> Um, so how's it been kind of working together to adapt to comics? Like, have you guys, have there been a lot of issues kind of going back and forth, or has it been pretty seamless? Liz is, Liz is in charge. You know, I wrote the books. People say, what's your job? And I say, I wrote the books. Liz knows what she's doing. She said, this is this is her area of expertise. This is her specialty. Well, I came to these books as a huge fan. Like, I read them in 2012. I waited for City of Mirrors to come out. Like, I pre-ordered it like a geek. Like, I waited. <laughs> and um, so it's been, it's been really... It's been really nice for us and the writers to have access to Justin, to just kind of... Just kind of make sure we're even even at a even at a big picture level to make sure we're sort of we're sort of on the same page. Um, you know, we're we're splitting the book up into three. The book is split up into three sections, and our first season is focusing on Project Noah. Um, so we're really you know we have the time to build on what Justin did in the book um, and to kind of go deeper into some different characters. Um, but it all, it's really important to all of us that it's really true to what we love in the book and it feels like the spirit of what is in the book is, is, uh, feels like it's in the show. Have there been some compromises that we've had to make that are not really able to be translated that, you know, you wish you could have? I mean, we, I was unable to put Lacey the character of Lacey in the pilot because I, I just I just couldn't figure out how to I, I did the experience of reading the book to me was it just felt like that first section was so much about Brad and Amy and like that's the that's the thing that's the thing that felt like the beating heart of the show so I wasn't able to kind of get Lacey in in the beginning but we did find a way to put her in later and so that made me really happy so most of, so I feel like we're not leaving anything we're not leaving anything on the table. I mean, TV is about, you know, you do have to make hard choices. You have to, um, there's a lot of stuff in the book that is kind of like um, interior, so we had to find ways to like make it active. Um, but, uh, but I'm really, I'm so, I'm so happy that, I'm so happy to be able to, uh, to be able to do the source material. It's just, it's just wonderful. It's wonderful to have a map to kind of know where we're going. It's wonderful to build on the characters that Justin created, it's great. Have there been challenges for you as a writer and showrunner on a genre show versus other shows would on like Friday Night Lights? Just dealing with maybe like effects, practical effects or special effects. And has that been any kind of adjustment for you? Yeah, a lot of this is new to me. It's it's like I'm kind of a weird fit for the show. And I really but I do think like when we met, it was like there's a lot there's some there's some DNA of Friday Night Lights in this yeah. show. It's Friday Night Lights, I'll say, is my favorite show. Yeah. Right. With prior to knowing Liz or it's anything. Yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. Good yeah. Show to have. yeah. <laughs> um, but it was it was it was. I mean, I certainly approached it as character first and genre second, which is how I think Justin approached the novels, yeah. um, and uh, and that's what makes it fun for us to be able to play, you know, to do character work on such a big canvas is super fun. It's great. Vampires are to the passage what football is to Friday night. Oh, look at you. <laughs> right, it's a setting, it's a culture, it's a circumstance, it's the weather, right? It's not the point. I mean, the point is really, like, when you read those books, it's all, like, human connection. It's like the characters who are able to connect with other characters and to say, I'm going to be responsible for you. I'm going to, I mean, I'm going to be, I mean, I'm, um, excuse me, I'm, I'm going to be responsible for you. I love you. Like those characters tend to have a better shot at survival right. <laughs> and at having a dignified death if there is going to be a death. But um, but so so that's what that's how we approach it in the writers' room. So, Justin, Hi. question for you. So as a writer, how has it been watching this thing that you've spent so much time on, yeah. this world you've lived in, come into an actual like visual yeah, that's an odd one, right? And it's because, you know, every time the book gets read by somebody, it's actually different, right? I mean, every time a book is read, it's being adapted to the reader's mind. And I believe this very profoundly. A book is not a thing. There is no fixed object called a book. A book is an event, and the event happens every time it's read. It moves through the mind of a reader. The reader does half the work. The reader builds a story in their head. 
right? It's psychologically, this is, ab this is absolutely completely the case. That's what the, that's what the, that's how art works, and that's how narrative works. So whenever anybody reads it, they're seeing an ex something different. They're experiencing something different, anyway. But it's also private. I don't see what they see. I always see what I see, right? So when it becomes movie television, when it actually goes into that visual medium. I'm seeing Liz's dream. Like it's really, weird. It's, it's it's sort of you know, you're sort of seeing somebody into somebody else's head to do it, and and of course I'm the weirdest audience in the world for this because I know not only every sentence of the books, but I also know the sentences I didn't write. I know the moments I just I know what I decided not to do. I know you know what what I thought was going to go there and didn't. So um, so I I watch the show and I think about this, and then I go to my office and I write my new book. Right? <laughs> that's that's what I really need to do. Is go write my new book. Yeah. For both of you guys, was yeah. there something you were really excited to see from the books on, like, come to life? I mean, I go back to Brad and Amy's relationship. Yeah. I just feel like that's that that I think is um, that's what I was excited about. I mean, that I think was a lot of people's way into the book. Like, I know so many women. I know so many other moms. Like, my kids play soccer, so I you know say I'm doing this book. I mean, on the sidelines, and so many moms have read it, and I think. I mean, so many women have read this book and are big fans, and I think it's because of that relationship, yeah. because you make the world, the genre stuff, so accessible to anybody, because they can recognize themselves in some of the characters, and um, so I totally forgot the question. <laughs> I'm sorry. A, yeah, a character, a scene, something that you were really excited to actually see. I mean, I like the scene at the carnival very much. I like when they decide to kind of run away together. I love the carnival the scene. scene. I, would vote. I was actually there when they shot the carnival scene at this high school in, in Georgia, right? Took it over and put the carnival there. And the carnival was the is in the when I was writing the book, and this is how the first portion of the book works. That's that's a moment where a man just turns. He just says, "I'm going to totally unpack my life on the behalf of a child," right? And he becomes a dad at that moment, and that was. That was a, that's a big scene for me, that scene at the carnival, which is only slightly different in some ways from the one that, that, Liz, that Liz created. And uh, yeah, I was really I was delighted by that scene. If Liz had said, no, we're not going to do it at a carnival, they're going to go bowling, I'd be like, I'll pay for the carnival rides, okay? Uh, give me the twirly, give me the, you know, give me the shooting gallery. Yes. On a show where you have uh, uh, the char strong characters like the Brad and Amy relationship, you have Brad and Lila, which I think people were seizing on downstairs watching, do you find yourself doing a calculus of, all right, how much blood drinking do I have to have and fanning, you know, going into people's minds versus like that good kind of story drama? You know, look, you, you write a few of these episodes and you start to go, okay, I think this is the perfect episode of The Passage. It's this much this and this much. But I think, I mean, as we go forward, like we use flashbacks to tell characters' backstories. And my hope is that you get invested with everybody just as much as you are with Brad and Amy. I mean, you know, Shauna Babcock, we unpack her backstory in, I think, the third episode. Um, and I think it's she, she's got a super sympathetic story. And then I think you go, wow, she seems like a bad guy, but she has this whole story. You understand why the journey that took her to Project Noah is like, it's just a, I mean, um, I mean, I hope that, like, we hook into everybody, you know. Brad and Amy, I think, is the relationship that you kind of, that kind of brings you into the pilot, brings you into Project Noah. But I think it's our job to do that with everybody, you know. So, just how much when you're writing the original book? No. How much, how much research did you do to, as far as the science part? Um, plenty. You know, um, I I had to learn so many things writing the first book. Novelists are actually, we're, we're all kind of like, we know just about this much about everything, right? I mean, sooner or later, you have to dip into everything and you have to you have to know what you don't know so you can find out. That's actually the more interesting sort of mental operation. Um, and I had to I had to learn how to hotwire a diesel locomotive to write the first book, okay? <laughs> Which, as it turns out, there's, there's a website that's practically called How to Hotwire Diesel Locomotive. So, you know, thank God for, for Google. Um, but for the medical stuff, I worked with um, a former colleague of mine at a college that I used to teach, and she teaches bio, and her daughter was one of my students, and we were friends for years, and I'd say, okay, she's been doing this for several books. I'd just say, I need something kind of like this. Like, help me make it work. Because you don't, you actually want to work from what you need when you're, when you're researching these kinds of things. Um, that, and, and then sort of backtrack it to like, what's a plausible way to, to get there. Um, so yeah, I did plenty of that stuff, a lot of phone calls. Um, people like to tell you what they're experts about. That's one thing I've learned. If you, somebody knows something, 
and you say, I really, you, you, your information is valuable to me. Tell me all about it. it the, the problem is actually turning it off. <laughs> and then you guys were saying how important it was to see Brad and Amy in real life and their chemistry. Can you tell us a little bit about bringing this cast together, like what it was like to bring them together? And um, I mean, obviously, I've seen the pilots, and it was wonderful. There was obviously some backlash, but um, so what was it like bringing these different actors together? How did we find them? Um, it was great. Uh, Sanaya walked in and just took the part off the table for anybody else. It was just very clear the minute she opened her mouth that like this was her part and it was nobody else's part and that's just the way it was going to be. And that's what you want. You want the actor to come in and go, it's mine. Own it, and then yeah. you go, it's yours. Okay. Yeah. Um, same with Brienne. Brienne came in. It was, you know, she's so, she's so, she's right over there. Um, she's so, she's so, I mean, like, she came in, she was so rough around the edges as Shauna Babcock, the actress is not, but she was just, she just, she just painted this portrait, and she just got it, and that was it. Um, let's see, um, Emmanuel, we threw a coat over her head, and I stuffed her in the trunk of my car and drove her to Atlanta. Um, Vincent uh, was just was just a Vincent audition. Everybody auditioned. Yeah. yeah, except for Mark Paul. Yeah. yeah. Was he? That's interesting because he doesn't really have a genre of background. It's not it's like kind of a new idea for him, yeah. show-wise. But what he's about so him? right for it. Yeah. He's so, and I was watching, you know, I had watched his work on Pitch, and there was something, there was a little DNA in common with the characters, I think, that kind of dry sort of guy that doesn't, that doesn't talk so much. You can see him thinking. Little world-weary, yeah. kind of seen a lot, yeah. you know. A little well, sarcastic, yeah. can do a little small ball funny, yeah. you know, in a good way. Um, but yeah, it's, I don't know if anybody here... Henry Ian is a genre guy, but I don't know. Other than that, I think we're all kind of, we're all kind of just, we just come from shows about human beings Thank you very on the planet Earth. Okay. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. You can subscribe here to so subscribe to the channel. There's more videos off to the left. Mr. J says, don't forget to ring that bell button for more notifications.